Hi, I'm Jenny Bodley. And this is Teresa Garrett. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do a um, presentation on how to use Jing, which is a screenshot tool um, that you can use for formative feedback in the discussion boards or other places online and maybe in other parts of your life. Um, and it's a quick tool. We are hoping you can be interactive. And um, uh, Teresa is going to take it away. Hey, Harvey. Um, so first of all, we want to we want to have a chance as much as possible to have a kind of a conversation with you, because um, it will just make it much more meaningful. We want to find out how you might be able to use this tool, which is Jing, to create screenshots um, to use in instruction. But first of all, we would like to ask you. How do you see the use of images in your day-to-day -day life or in instruction? And um, if you could go ahead and uh, type into the chat so that we could uh, share those with everyone. And um, the, I just wanted to share one example, and that is um, recently when the security system in my home was going crazy and, and beeping, and I was going around trying to rip out uh, batteries to see if I could stop it. And I um, I get up there and I got taken it apart and I can't get this battery out. So I am ready. Um, oh, there's nobody here yet. Okay. Well, just come on in. <laughs> so anyway, so, um, so I take a picture with my phone, send it to my brother and say, how do I get this out? So that's just an idea of how images are everywhere in our life today. And you may have kids or you yourself use Instagram or chat, and um, so so if you want to share how you use um, images, either in day to day or instruction, please uh, type that into the chat so we can discuss it. And also another thing, the reason why we wanted to bring this tool to you today is that we feel and see if you agree that a lot of students aren't fully reading. Um, they're not fully reading everything that you send to them in your Blackboard course or in emails. And they may not read carefully. And sometimes um, sometimes an image can say more than um, a lot of typing. And we wanted to look at this um, infographic here, 13 reasons um, for using infographics. And basically, one of the things that this um, tries to convey is that we are visually wired and um, we kind of crave images and images help us to decipher things and to learn. So the other thing that goes along with that being visually wired is the fact that there's so much information coming at us, especially in text format, that it can be overwhelming. And sometimes an image is just a more powerful way to convey what you want to convey and to get the attention. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I include an image in an announcement or an email, I get much better responses from students. So um, we did have a couple of responses. Oh, good. Um, reading off of a screen, so um, let me know if you can't hear me very well. But Harvey said um, that he teaches in TESOL. Um, so using images is uh, very uh, important, and it's very valuable for him. So um, uh, Harvey uses them almost every day, and I can certainly see in that application where images are more helpful, especially if, if the text um, is difficult for students to understand. Uh, Tony um, mentioned that Tony likes to use pictures to introduce a topic for discussion or lecture notes to help set the tone, um, set the, the context. Um, for what's, what's going to happen. Um, Mark also says that he uses pictures for disassembly, um, for reference during reassembly. reassembly. Um, I'm not quite sure I understand that, um, but maybe some of you do if that happens to be content specific in your area, or, or Mark, go ahead and let us know more if you want. Um, Ellen Crew um, uses a lot of screenshots. Mark uses video, so yes, that's certainly in the realm of images. Anna uh, uses Jing to um, share short instructional videos. So that's awesome. That's totally setting the tone about what we're going to do. So I love that we already have buy-in 
from our faculty, and hopefully that will help some of you who haven't used it before, um, you know, get over that hump to try something new. And some of you may have used, um, like, I think is it Snippet that's a part of Word? Snag it. Or Snag it. Um, but Gene is just another screen capture tool, but it's free and it's quick and it's easy. Right. So we just wanted to show you very quickly where you might go get Jing. As Teresa mentioned, um, you know, it's, it's free for you guys. Um, uh, this is not a, a Blackboard tool or something that's proprietary for CityU. This is just a, a tool by the company TechSmith. And um, I'll show you how you can find it after you leave here. You just go to your favorite search engine and put in Jing. And um, it's this Jing TechSmith. So go ahead and click on that. And this is the landing page for their tool, Jing. So they have other tools also, but the one we're looking at specifically is Jing. And what you'll want to do is go to the right-hand side. I hope you can see my cursor here. I'm moving it to the download button. And then you can download for Windows um, or Mac. And I'm not going to go ahead and demo that because we actually already have it installed up here. And I want to let you know that um, we're recommending the free tool. There are other features that they may want to, um, you can upgrade, but we're just saying this is a free, quick and easy tool that you can use right away. So after you go ahead and install Jing, what you will see on your desktop or whatever device you're working on where you've installed it is this little sun. And what you'll do is put your cursor over the sun and use these crosshairs. And the crosshairs will allow you to capture a part of a screen. Uh, you can go ahead and make it bigger, smaller, or if you made a mistake, cancel it out and start again. And then you hit this Capture Image button. And it captures the image that was within your crosshairs. And the great thing about Jing is the ability to overlay text or arrows um, to annotate or provide context for your image. Um, and the way you would do that is using these menus uh, or these tools on the left, see this left-hand menu. Um, so oftentimes I'll, for example, point, hey, download Windows here. Um, and then I might add a text box here. You can also change the color of your text box, um, make a lighter purple one because that doesn't show up so well. But, um, and if you made a mistake, just go here to this undo, and it should clear the last things you did. Um, once you have a text box, you can add text to it. Um, uh, and you can resize your text box. Anyway, you can make your font bigger or smaller. Um, you can just play around with it once you start doing this, but you can't break it, you can't do anything wrong, and you can always cancel out of it. But once I go ahead and make one, you can actually save it to your desktop or save it in your file structure somewhere, um, or you can share via screencast, which is what I often do. So sharing it uploads it into a tab, and then when you're on the tab, what you can do is copy the URL and then send that to somebody in their email. You might post it in a Blackboard shell, and all they have to do is click on that link to get to the image. Um, if you save it, you certainly can embed the image. Anyway, that's a quick demo on how to use the tool. Um, I'm going to go back to our presentation very quickly and show you a couple um, of ex static examples that we had prepared before the presentation, um, which is easier to, to understand, the text on the right or this picture on the left with very little text but with an arrow um, showing you the, the context of where the question um, goes. Um, it, it's, for me, it would be much easier if I were a student to see feedback uh, on the left that's an image instead of the right. And the other benefit is that in using this tool, you might save yourself some typing. And as an online instructor or, or instructor anywhere, we do so much work in front of a keyboard that if you can convey 
what you want to tell them with an image and save yourself typing. That's that's always beneficial. Um, a lot of times, you know, I'm sure you've all had a student say, well, where do I find this? And it's somewhere in the Blackboard course, and you have to tell them or you're trying to guide them. You can just take a, a Jing screenshot, and you can point, literally, almost mm -hmm. as if you were with the student, and you point over their shoulder to where they um, do we need to make it bigger, full screen? Oh, we have some questions. Uh, so Harvey's saying this tool looks super useful, more useful than the feedback tool in Blackboard. Oh. Uh, so, <laughs> so I think there's a reason sometimes you would do feedback in Blackboard um, for some kinds of assignments. Uh, the librarians often facilitate discussion boards, um, and so we find it very helpful to do screenshots and then leave the link in the discussion board for the students. Um, so yeah, def definitely there are applications in Blackboard, um, and, and I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Um, the other, let's see. Um, do you mind demo? Oh yeah. Let me just. Um, yeah. We're gonna demo a couple more of these. Yeah, I was going to say we often use this um, when we're um, guiding students to search and we want to show them how to search in one of our databases. We will um, open uh, the database and we will put in our keywords um, and um, So we will then use this to send the student um, a, a gene, and we'll show them, you know, here's how you um, use this form, and here's how you add filters, um, and here's how you search, and here's how you read this screen, which is kind of complex. And what we'll do is we will send this um, we will send this as a link in a response to the student, and we will say, can you replicate this? Because that's a better way to teach than to just send them a search. Mm -hmm. We're trying to show them how to interact, and I think this could be helpful for looking at APA, looking at where in a student's work you want to make a comment. I mean, obviously, there's inline grading in Blackboard, right. but... Right. This is a quick and dirty. Uh, another place I really like to use it, again, as a librarian, a lot of the times these um, examples would work for activities that I do, but I do believe they would have applications for most of you in, uh, in the instructor role. Um, I might be reading a paper and need to draw an arrow to a certain passage and say, where did you get this? Uh, site. Where is your site? Um, I might, if they say something, um, but they don't cite, I'll say, where is your evidence? Um, and all I have to do is put like a, a very small, um, short question. I put an arrow. That shows that there's uptake on my side. I'm reading what they're writing, so I'm not just, uh, you know, giving feedback that's really not um, helpful or directed. And they can quickly see exactly where I'm talking about and quickly see what they need to give back to me. They need to give me a site. Mm -hmm. I want them to be more specific with their evidence. The, the benefit there is it's contextual and the student is looking at what you're looking at mm -hmm. and hearing your feedback. Um, and so um, another, another way that this could be used is to, um, for example, um, if you're in a course and you want to guide the students to, you know, an announcement or to a part of the course where they need to pay attention, you can, again, choose to, to highlight, you know, what you want them to pay attention to, and you can give them a note where you say, uh, please do this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a way to really get in front of your students. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know one of our instructors in English 102 uh, gets a lot of the same questions every quarter, and he actually kind of has this uh, uh, pat list of screenshots that he uses. Um, a lot of students will come to him with the question every quarter of where do I submit my assignment? 
Um, so he has a screenshot of go to assessments and tests, and then he has a screenshot of the next screen uh, where there's the submit button. The questions have, where do I uh, submit this to safe assign? Again, assessments, and it's the safe assign is on the submit page. Um, where do I uh, where do I find the discussion? Where do I find the directions for the discussion board? Um, those sorts of things. Um, and one thing I want to mention too is that I don't only just use this every day in work, but I probably use it several times a week in my personal life. My in-laws um, love new technology, but they don't always know how to <laughs> use it. And so um, I have actually a group text, which was. Um, Jing was instrumental on uh, for me in getting them on the group text. Um, so we use WhatsApp. And so I showed WhatsApp in my browser and I said, Jim and Margie, go download here. And when it opens, do this. So I sent them successive steps with pictures. They got on that night. She told me, my mother-in-law told me how helpful the picture was. Um, I don't know, it's, I use it for directions all of the time um, to annotate maps if, if we're going someplace difficult. Um, but I use Jing in my personal life, too, and I, I hope you all um, will see how valuable it is. And when you, when you click on this copy, um, what you're doing, you can just paste this into an email or into a Word document, and the image pastes in. It doesn't get lost, although there is a drawback in Blackboard. Um, when you're using it in discussion posts and you want to add a picture. The only way you could do it with the Jing shot is to use this save, where you save it to your folders, and then you pull it in through an attachment. You're, you're pulling the image in in Blackboard, mm -hmm. which is kind of awkward, and I wish it wasn't that way, but that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. The other thing is you can just include the link and say, click here to find whatever, or for an explanation. But you can use this. In, you know, just to help sell you on the ease of this, I have it installed on my work computer and my laptop at home, and I don't have to open anything. Whenever mm -hmm. I open my laptop, it's right there. I can find the sun, and you can move the sun around the screen. And if, for example, in Windows, if, if, if I don't see the screen, if I put Jing here, it tells me that I have it, and it says, oh, Jing's already look, running. Look for the yellow round circle. Right, it's right there. So, and you can drag this if you find yeah. it harder to see it there. You can drag it over here, so you can see the sun is moving around the screen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, we have five minutes left, so I want to um, ask you if you have any ideas. I we'd love to hear how you think this might be something that you could use to communicate with students. Um, and while you think of that and maybe type in some ideas and we can brainstorm, um, Jenny wanted to show you, you can also make yeah. a quick video with yeah. G. Anna um, had mentioned that she does quick videos. Um, I, we also do quick videos. We call them quick and dirty videos because it's the free version of Jing. You get to make um, a video or a screen capture that's under five minutes. Um, so. Uh, I used the crosshairs. I went to my son, used the crosshairs, grabbed a section of the um, page that I wanted to record, and I hit capture video. Um, you can go ahead and make sure that your microphones work. That's what you're seeing right now. I'm going to hit continue because my microphone is working. It does a countdown, and it tells you your mic is on and you're recording. And if you want to stop recording, you hit finish. If you want to pause in your recording, cough, go get a drink of water, um, and then resume, you can do that. And when you are finished, you can watch it. And then again, you can save or um, share it via screencast, so grab a tool. Um, or you can cancel and just do it again. Um, this is all saved. All the videos and screenshots are saved um, in Jing. And what you do to access anything that you've done before is go to the sun and look at history and it'll show you everything that you've uh, recorded. Now, I record uh, videos and make screenshots all day long, so it's really hard for me to look at the history because they're kind of small. But, but as you're getting used to it, you might go back um, to find a screenshot you did before.
um, that's just another feature of Jing. Does anybody have any questions, or um, do we have anybody that's? Oh, okay. Um, um, we're going to read some comments. Okay, Ellen is saying that um, in our chemical dependency class that is entirely self-paced, I can see course facilitators being able to use this much like you did in the session to provide students with a roadmap navigating through the different modules. You know, it is so true that our students, it, the Blackboard interface is busy. And you can't always, especially if you're a new student and new to Blackboard, it's a lot to navigate. Oh, I have to move closer. So being able to point the shell and to point, you know, where to click. I often do a breadcrumb trail. I will take a screenshot and then I will say, click on, and then I do the breadcrumb trail, and then they know what to, um, what's going to help. And we have another comment. Um, so Mark has a question. Can I take pictures or videos with my smartphone and bring them into Jing for sharing? Well, that's a great question because uh, the answer is kind of yes and no. So I take videos with my uh, phone. I have a Google uh, or an Android phone that, that runs on Google. And um, so my photos that I take with my phone are uploaded to Google. So I go to my Google Photos um, and have that in my, open in my browser. I might open a picture and then I can take a screenshot of that picture. Um, so that's perhaps one way to do it, but I don't think there's a way to upload from photo tools and photo apps into Jing. Um, but there are those workarounds like I just mentioned. I think that the full, um, like if you pay for the Jing um, higher advanced level, you might have editing tools. Yeah. Um, another question we just got, can you use it to deliver a presentation with a PowerPoint? Um, well, just as we are now, you could have your PowerPoint presentation up on your desktop, and you go ahead and use the crosshairs to select that area of your desktop that you want to uh, record, and then, of course, you can speak over your PowerPoint and record. Again, for the Jing free version, you can't go over five minutes for the video. So um, you can perhaps have... Uh, I always find that I don't like to give students videos over five minutes anyway. So um, they just don't have the bandwidth to sometimes keep going. And <laughs> they can kind of compartmentalize in five minute increments. Um, yeah. For me, that seems to work well. I think it works great for a PowerPoint like talk over. And it, it's a great way to quickly do it. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for your participation. We so much appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you, Jennifer and Teresa. That was wonderful. Thank you for Jing forming us. <laughs> um, this ends our presentation for this uh, session in the Hanoi room. Please feel free to fill out the survey link, and we'll see you in five minutes back in this room with Brian Munn and Whitney Boswell. Thank you. <laughs>